Hello, Americans or illegals listening. I just want you to know, wait a sec now. Got to put on my black Brandon shades. Ah, uh, much better. Hear me now and hear me once, for I will not repeat myself again. This is the Cowman's Country Slaughterhouse podcast. Country Slaughterhouse. Country Slaughterhouse. <laughs> What's going on, y'all? Anyone watch the State of the Union address? Because I did. And so, of course, I had to go to the bathroom. Again. And uh, I'll tell you what the state of my union is. And that's shaky at best. In my bowels. <laughs> well. Alright, see, I also watched Marjorie Taylor Peen. Sorry. Sorry, Green. Uh make a simp of herself on national television for Trump. Marge, sweetheart, Trump wouldn't F you if you were the very last monster on the earth. But, I for one, would still have to think about it. You know, if the moment arose, and I would have to be at my most desperate. But, Get 10 or 12 Bud Lights in me. And you might as well be Sidney Sweeney. I mean, is she the one who possesses the milk? Ah, yes. A uh, couple of whole milk jugs, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> Marge is just an old cow out the pasture, man. Come on now. No need to take my name in vain. I got tons of family, P.O.P. And they all despise you. And what you just said. Anyhow. The State of the Union was, uh, Jup- uh, it- <coughs> Excuse me, was Joe- Was, uh, Jovial? And Biden said all the right words, and made all the right moves. I could see the strings tugging away, and I knew then and there. He'll never be a real boy. Not like his hero of a son. The apple has fallen away from the tree and landed straight into a pile of gold with that one. Make him president, dang it! I'd vote for the hunter. Hunting pussy, good times, a little bit of meth, but that's only if you're ready for it. Marjorie Taylor Peen just wants to lock up his dong. I want him on the show, okay? Look. That happens, everybody gets to win. Marjorie Taylor Peen went to Congress with a printed out Facebook post to testify that they need to lock his dong straight away. And I get it. The man has a dangerous penis. And can one let such a threat just walk amongst the rest of us? Maybe. But Marge, Marjorie, If Trump don't want you, Hunter Biden deaf doesn't want you. Like, you're basically dick suicide to him. So, come on down to Boise, where we've moved the show to. Nubby Nader said Chicago is full of crime and immigrants, as our CEO, his name is Julian Wilson, put it. I said, Julian, Boise, Idaho, and he just jumped out of his chair right out the fucking window, and that's when I knew we had to follow suit. We did? We moved? One. So you fell asleep for like two days, Oh, man. man. I gotta stop pre-hibernating. So, this is a start, a new one. For the Cowman's Country Slaughterhouse, Moo! A show 
to describe the fine lines of reality TV when I'm sitting next to you and there's no more popcorn and no one wants to get up and guess what? That the next episode, it starts with a 30 minute recap of the prior one. Oh God! No skip in the intro! Smoke it, shoot it, snort it, eat it or drink it. A segment that has been a crowd favorite of the past and that we are bringing back to show special attention to what is known colloquially as the fan. Where the red fan grows, huck and fan, fan in the machine, fentanyl. Something that we've been familiar with for quite a while but Mostly have just had to judge whether or not our coke was laced with it by the repute of our dealers. Do they look like high school dropouts? Huge red flag. Do they look like homosexual bookstore owners? Green light, baby. I did fentanyl one time. (laughs) Woke up sprinting in the middle of some dang cornfield. Uh, start with why and how next time? I did. That's it then? Anyways, that's not even what fentanyl does. It's supposed to take you to heaven or to hell, just like a single orgasm, which I've heard when combined to feel like a million, trillion thousand orgasms all at once. I mean, who wants that kind of power? Uh, me. Pass it over here, thank you very much. Too bad no one here in Boise, Idaho wants to sell me anything that's laced with this cool new drug. Hell, I remember when weed was the coolest new drug back in the 90s. And I was like, this has been around forever. Y'all know that, right? And they didn't. Just like fentanyl. Just take a bunch of painkillers and boom! Fentanyl. Well... Happy birthday, Carmen. Here's some fentanyl. What? Where'd you get this, you dirty old shoe? Oh, it's just, uh, I know a guy named Bradley. He's got tons of it in his shed in the backyard. You say millions? No. No. Just a ton or so. A lot for one guy. And he even, make a, he even made a joke about it. If it wasn't for the Mexicans, he wouldn't be tripping night and day. Love him or hate him, they for real, he said. Wow. So very interesting. Hand it over. Wow. Whoa. That's like not a lot. Careful, man. That stuff was 20 bucks. Right. Well, our next guest is here to tell us the dangers of faint exposure. Recently discharged from the force for unloading a clip into the back seat of his cruiser because he heard an acorn hit it. Jesse Hernandez of Florida. Great to have you here, buddy. Did you hear that? No, I didn't. Just messing with you. <laughs> That's what I do now for fun. <laughs> we got there, buddy. Right. Well, we have uh, anonymously mailed to us uh, from uh, God knows where. Uh, a half a pound of fentanyl. No, Brad Little, man. I said that already. Sold me in this backyard. <laughs> yeah, that's a piece of poop's way of saying thank you so much for coming to the show. Wait, wait. Did you say fentanyl? Yeah, I, I did. <laughs> um, no wonder my left arm started tingling instantly. You only have to be five meters to feel instant effects. Piece of poop, and I have touched it. And for him, you know, he's done much more than that. We're both just fine. You're the exception, not the rule. The rule says if you even... If you even touch Fent, drop to the ground, yell, I'm hit, and unload into the nearest passenger vehicle. Or, if it's just your own, the passenger. Wow, that's standard procedure? Oh, yeah. Out in the field, criminals will just hand you their ID, and it's laced with Fent, just like their wallets, their clothes. Instant paralysis for anyone else. So you might as well have just put a gun to my head and blown my brains all over the place. I heard that it uh, has to get into your system to really do anything. Otherwise, it's just like, you know, like uh, 
Like duck. <laughs> Don't scare me, man. I don't want to go back. I mean, I do. But not like that. <laughs> uh, we'll be right back after a word. <laughs> What if you are stuck in a dream that you didn't understand? Like stapling a hundred thousand million pieces of paper to a fuzzy wall with eyes and ears and a mouth. When it speaks, you wake up and your wife is having sex with some guy right next to you. One day, it'll happen to you. But for now, let's check in with our main character, me. This is about me, William Dore. I awoke in a dream that was like none other. A dream where the trees were made of rubber, soft, delicate to the touch, rubber. The streets, licorice, but black licorice, pleasing to the eye, yuck to the taste. I, the eye that resides in the stream of mine, has decided to take on a case. Now you may wonder, reader, am I not familiar with the machinations of a writer? Not a detective, surely, but Sometimes, reader, mysteries abound. <laughs> and so I took the case. But then she walked through my door. Two tin cans staring right at me. She told me about her husband and how he wouldn't hear us. And through the smoke, all I could see were her tinnies. The ancient Greeks used to say that the jugs were simply another pair of eyes. So I imagined that I was addressing someone else as I stared, fearful of breaking eye contact. When suddenly she started loudly moaning and turned on as I may have been. This was not her moaning for me, but for another. And then I began wandering the halls of my apartment, looking for her like a good detective, taking clues, keeping my ears wide open. Suddenly, a loud bang. I awoke to silence, covered in sweat. But my own? Or was it even sweat? I did not know. But I indeed sampled it with my tongue, coming to the hard conclusion that it was indeed come. Looking over to my left was my naked wife and just some tall, handsome, ripped guy penetrating her very essence. Ah! 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 I screamed out loud to the echoes of my voice. Tune in next time for the dark tales of William Duray's dream machine. <laughs> For our final thoughts on this edition of The Country Slaughter House. I just want to remind y'all that I was always correct, okay? And don't you ever doubt it for a motherfucking sec. If I could go back and chisel when, you know, when the Bible was put into stone. Uh, put in the part that, uh, you know, my things are my own. And two, my exes can go right to fucking Texas. All right, see? The richest men on earth now know what it's like to lose everything. Their waterbed, their Airstream trailer, their Babe Ruths, all to one bitch. Barbara! Bill Gates, 
possibly runs the world, possibly, although more like probably, is a pedo, and three lost billions to his ex. And I'm over here like, she single? Dot, dot, dot. She want to toss the feet my way? Dot, dot, dot. Okay, look, my strengths are walking the beach and how long I can stay up watching Reno 911. And that's all week, baby, because I love those guys. I love the guy with the little shorts, because he's gay. <laughs> and the big one, because he's big and black. <laughs> And I like the black guy, cause... Listen, I get it, okay? When you love something, you don't explain. That's why I tried to explain just now before you explained. And also what I tried to explain to my ex-wife when I come back at 7 in the morning. At the king of the bald, Bezos, he's now going through the same. First, Leonardo de fuck your wife, bro, DiCaprio made a move at some award ceremony on her. And then Jeff threatens to push him off a cliff. Big mistake. Never go public with your vengeance. Can't you just do it? Take the baseball bat, take the spray paint, find his most expensive vehicle, and have your way with it. Okay? Now, Jeff Sachs is giving away his money to just about everyone and everything. And I'm like... Huh? What? Huh? Where's my cut? If you're trying to empty the safe, I'm the best in the biz. One night in Atlantic City, and it's gone. Long gone. Offshore. In basements. In several timeshares. Stored away in those timeshares. Stored in hollowed out books. Ones he'd never check, because they look... So very boring. Isn't that just every book in the frickin' world, man? Good one, piece of poop. <laughs> yeah, except my book. Ten dwarves, a dozen geese, and my dead dad. I heard it was uh, in the top 25 in Yugoslavia for like a couple days, you know. What's just as ironic is the guy who reads the least Sells the most books. What the fuck? You, you've obviously never read my book. Where to poop when there's nowhere to poop. Ten easy steps and one really hard one on pooping. So, in short, the chances of a monkey on a typewriter tapping out Shakespeare is like a million or something. Uh, but... Uh, Mackenzie Scott, give me some of that money, please. Just like 10000 that's nothing. This is your cow, man, signing out. Boogie down, Boise. Moo! Thank you.